Hello and welcome to Innovation 2020 Lessons from Practice. My name is Ahmad Abu Khater. Thanks for the invitation and for your time today. I have a confession to make. I was trained as an architect and we learned that in any project, we plan the project, we design it, we build it, and then we manage it. This is the project life cycle, plan, design, build, and manage. Does it sound familiar to anyone? Yes, of course it does. It mirrors the product and innovation life cycle, but with different labels that are not antithetical in practical terms. In the product life cycle management, we have the ideation phase, the proof of concept or the minimal viable product phase, the release and production phase, and then the launch and monitor phase before the product is retired or end of life with some variations. But what's most telling here is that to understand that really both architecture and innovation are really strikingly similar in the sense that they are all about value augmentation, defining value, creating value, communicating value, and finally delivering value to your customer. The difference between architecture and innovation is that in innovation, the end customer is more than just one client and they are not generally well known or well understood without extensive market research. Their needs and requirements are not well defined, not to mention the buyers and the users are not usually the same. So it is not a one-to-one -one engagement, but more like one-to-n or one-to-many engagement, which can be more challenging, of course. So it's critical to know who your customers are and what their problems might be. We also learned that innovation has a lot more risk and uncertainty in terms of how to monetize the investment which means that there are no guarantees that your target customer will actually buy your product once it is ready. Unlike architecture, which is an up upfront paid engagement. This is all compounded by the market fluctuation and the speed in which change in technology happens today. The micro and macro economy, and let's not forget the competition, which we will dis discuss later. So as you can see, our job as innovators is to be able to build the right product for the right market, build it right with the right tools, processes, and resources, and build it fast so we don't miss the market window. In other words, innovation is all about enabling us to deliver the right product for the right customer at the right time with high level of quality and reliability. So what is innovation? The MIT definition of, of innovation is the delicate integration process by which we can take ideas from inception to impact. What I would add is that it is the creation of enough perceived value for someone that they are willing to pay for. The value must be measurable, quantifiable, and demonstrable. Said differently, the process capable of producing ideas that can be commercialized and monetized. So innovation is a process and it's not really about aha moments as many people think. It does not start with an idea. It starts with information about your customers and their problems. And it does not end with finding a solution. It is about value augmentation to stay relevant in the face of all of these changes we talked about. There is a difference between innovation and invention. Has anyone heard of general magic? For those of you who have not, these are the makers of the first smartphone, the Newton, in the late 1980s, years before Apple made a fortune with their uh, iPhone. So Apple iPhone was not the first smartphone. It was general magic that created that first iPhone. But ultimately, it crashed and went bankrupt. Anyone knows why that is? Well, it was the wrong timing. It was 15 years too early. 
the market was not ready for that innovation. The idea was awesome, but all the infrastructure necessary for its success was not there yet. And both the customers and users had a really hard time seeing its value. So it is all about the right product for the right market at the right time. Market window is very, very important. The market must be ready for the innovation. Otherwise, it runs the risk of being relegated to an invention that may not succeed in the market. Another important lesson we learned from this is that although the company itself failed, its idea was the foundation for the smartphone and, what, and a lot of what we now take for granted. So failure is not the end. It was the beginning for many important lessons that outlived them. Apple, for example, took that lesson and provided an incremental approach to the iPhone, the iPad, a thousand songs in your pocket. And it resonated so very well with so many people. Then this provided the springboard and enough runway for them to introduce the smartphone and for the market to accept it. So innovation is an activity and a process. And it is a function of invention and commercialization together. And it is more about discipline, not creativity. But what makes some companies like Apple, for example, innovative? What's their secret? Well, it comes down to three major pillars of market and value-driven innovation. The innovation ecosystem, the culture of innovation, and climate of innovation, which I'm going to discuss next. This is the difference between actually doing innovation and actually being innovative. Let's take a look at the innovation ecosystem, which has five connected elements that we need to leverage. The entrepreneurial infrastructure, the risk capital, the corporate resources, government and universities. This is about leveraging all of these components together. It is the collective wisdom to enable value delivery where the whole is greater than the sum of the individual parts. This is about open innovation, which, which is market driven and an outside in approach rather than an inside out approach to innovation. It is also about the learning enterprise, which is being part of this well-connected ecosystem rather than being on the outside of it. It is about creating fully networked and fully integrated enterprises by leveraging experts and ideas from inside as well as from outside the organization. If you only rely on yourself, you will end up turning your organization into an isolated island and a graveyard for ideas. Now that we introduced the innovation ecosystem, I want to spend some time on the culture and climate of innovation. Creating a culture of innovation means first and foremost that we need to be obsessively and maniacally focused on the customer who buys the technology and who uses that technology. Everything must begin and end with your customers. You cannot be everything for everyone. You do not shoot at everything that moves. You need a rifle, not a shotgun. You need focus. Focus on your customers and their problems that you can solve. So it's important to learn to say no to good ideas so you can make great ideas happen. That discipline will give you the focus that you need. An important element of creating a culture of innovation is to fall in love with the problems, not the solution. This way, you won't get disappointed when people reject your solution or call your baby ugly. This is because problems are why customers seek solutions. These problems need to be urgent, as in the customers need them today, not later. Pervasive as in these problems are not anomalies or one-offs, but representative of a larger market opportunity. And finally, that the customer is willing to pay for a solution to these problems. This is 
why it is so critical to create a testable hypothesis to validate your customers. So how do we do that? Well, we need to create a process that enables us to validate early and often and validate forward. So we can test our hypotheses and assumptions about the customer, the market, and the problems by creating these small innovation loops. With more information, you can minimize risk and uncertainty as you move deeper into the product lifecycle process. This leads to better innovation acuity, a better problem solution match, faster time to market, and accelerated time to value and revenue. The idea from implementing these iterative innovation cycles is to accelerate moving from idea all the way to impact. This innovation lifecycle process allows us to build the innovation pipeline, test and validate product ideas early and often to ensure their viability, desirability, and visibility. Throughout the various phases of the product lifecycle, of course, we pivot our direction with more information and certainty about our assumptions. In many cases, we start with a few ideas that end up merging into a single product offering or multiple complementary offerings that we can successfully commercialize and monetize. Remember that for every right door you open, you will have to open a dozen wrong ones. Failure is inevitable. Being able to fail early, fail often, and fail forward saves time and resources so we can minimize the cost of failure while learning and growing. So remember that we do not embrace failure here, but we accept it as part of the innovation process and we learn from it. We've got to be able to have the courage to take measured risk while embracing uncertainty in this ever evolving environment. Have you ever bought a car and all of a sudden you noticed a lot of people also bought this car? Well, you just didn't notice it before because you didn't have it. Now that you know better, you notice better and you do better. It is important to understand that opportunities for innovation exist in every stage of the product life cycle. So do not set out to prove that your solution is right. Set out to be on an adventure on a journey full, full of surprises, disappointments, and occasional breakthroughs. When it comes to culture of innovation, remember that innovation is a team sport and that it takes a village to innovate. So remember that innovation is all about the collective wisdom, not the individual genius. It is aligning all of the cross-functional teams and organizational capabilities to optimize capacity and performance in order to deliver value to the customers with product-led decisions and outcomes. Winners focus on winning, losers focus on winners. So in whatever you do, focus on winning. You cannot out-innovate your competition by copying them. You cannot do it better than them. You will always be playing catch up and only be second best. Develop your own true north, be authentic, but keep an eye on your competition. But more, more importantly, run your own race. Be yourself and keep your focus on your finish line, not your competition. Otherwise, it will be a lose-lose proposition or a pricing war that would eventually lead to a race to the bottom. Try and try and try over and over and over again. You cannot score if you do not take the shot. Think big, start small, act fast. But start somewhere, improve and build success over success. You need to be resilient and resourceful and create a business that can do more with less and can be innovative in times of uncertainty. A resilient and a nimble business is a viable and sustainable one. Without resiliency and ability to disrupt your business with new innovation before being disrupted, it would be a matter of time before someone else comes along and make you irrelevant. We all remember Kodak and know that the digital camera was actually invented by an engineer at Kodak. 
So don't be afraid to innovate and try, even if it means cannibalizing yourself before someone else does. Defining and measuring success are both important to be able to baseline your organization and to measure and gauge progress with the right set of KPIs. This is instrumental in keeping your finger on the pulse of your innovation, progress, and overall program health. The more value you provide to your customers, the more mature your business will become and the more growth you will achieve. So leverage innovation as a competitive advantage and a differentiating capability. Data is your best friend to show the organization how you are making incremental improvements, moving from ad hoc implementation towards functional excellence in your journey to build your competitive advantage. Our platinum role is define what you'll measure, measure what you'll move, move something that matters. Innovation is all about people, not processes or tools. People are the most valuable asset in your organization. So empower and invest in your people, unleash their innovation potential, give them a platform to share creative ideas and collaborate across the company divide. Adopt and reinforce people over process mentality. Although utilizing the right process is, is predictable often of a better outcome, change and transforma transformation is all about people and behavioral change is not about processes per, per se. Focusing on your transformation journey with people at the very core of it is very critical to achieving successful business transformation. Reward and encourage the right behavior more so than the right outcomes. You need more people who push boundaries and challenge the status quo. This is about creating societal and organizational infrastructure for innovative interactions and establishing and nurturing the right environment conducive for innovation. This is really important in shaping the right behavior and cultural norms for people to model and allow this type of behavior that rewards creativity and innovation. These cultural norms are important in moving from the processes of innovation to making innovation part of your organizational DNA and habits. Needless to say, executive support is critically important. Focus on making your initiative relevant to their very success by tying it to one or more of their strategic priorities. Make sure you secure executive sponsorship and support of your innovation so you do not end up as an afterthought or worse yet, being viewed as, viewed as, a, as a waste of resources. Many good innovations were killed or shelved because they were not prioritized as part of the corporate BGNOs or when they are seen as antithetical to affordability targets. Innovation is never about the size of your team or the size of the investment or the resources you have. It is about how passionate, committed, and disciplined you and your teams are. It is about finding a common purpose for you to rally the troops behind and a common cause that everyone believes in. We know that there are different types of innovations. Innovation can be either revolutionary or groundbreaking or incremental. It can also be a new innovation or new ways of doing the things differently. In other words, either doing things better or doing them differently with radical change. It also could be technology, product, organization, business model or tools and processes innovation. Remember, Google was not the first search engine. Facebook was not the first social media platform and Microsoft was not the first software company. In many cases, small innovative change can have a larger impact than a larger, than a larger more well-funded initiative. Consistency and scale is the key here. It is a, it's not about the size of the fist, it is about the impact of the punch. You need to keep those baby steps. As long as you are achieving improvements year over year, the cumulative impact will amount to a significant improvements to your baseline. 
Innovation leadership is also different than the traditional leadership in the sense that you are a leader of leaders. You enable your team to do great things by providing three essential things, direction, protection, and reward. Yes, create a strategy, but more importantly, provide guardrails. People align behind a common purpose, so show them what great looks like and they will follow you. Define scopes and veto bad ideas, then give your team a lot of room to be innovative and do great things. You will be amazed. Remember, behavioral and cultural change is difficult and it takes time. That's because transformation is a process, not an event. As you continue with the rest of this conference, I will leave you with this important thought. Do not take anything for granted. Challenge the status quo. As soon as you start walking, the way will appear. Start somewhere. Be bold. Be brave and keep on moving forward. So I implore you, I entreat you, and I challenge you to keep on innovating and making our world better and brighter. Thank you for your time.